Chris Millett is a professor of public health from Imperial College in London. Talk me through this new food classification. How does it work? Sure, so it's based on the levels of industrialised processing. Instead of thinking about unhealthy foods as having high fat, salt or sugar, he thinks there's a better way to classify which foods are a potential problem. So we're going to start with uh, group one, which is unprocessed or minimally processed foods. People would identify them as being natural foods, fruit and vegetables. Now these foods can be either fresh or frozen, and some of them do go through a modest amount of processing. So we think about milk, for example, mm -hmm. then that's gone through a process of pasteurization. Okay, so group one, minimally processed or unprocessed. That's correct. What's in group two? So group two is what we call processed culinary ingredients. So these are ingredients which we combine with ingredients from group one to cook with or to flavour. And those ingredients have been more processed. Oils have been extracted from plants, sugar has been refined, but they still are what we think of as ingredients. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Group three then is processed food. Now these foods typically undergo a modest amount of processing either to preserve them, to increase the flavour, or sometimes to produce a new food. So if we bring together milk, salt, fermentation makes a simple cheese. So foods that we want to prolong the life of, but haven't been tampered with in, in a substantial way. That's all pretty clear. Now we get on to group four. Which is ultra processed foods. This is the group that increasing numbers of public health experts think we're eating too much of. They go through a series of industrial processes in their creation. They contain typically very little in the way of whole foods. That means they lose quite a lot of their healthy properties, their nutrients and vitamins. They have a number of additives typically uh, to color, to flavor and to improve the texture of food to make it more appetizing, more flavorsome, etc. So we have a, a variety of foods, which includes something like chicken nuggets. So we've gone from a process of taking natural chicken and transforming it into the product of chicken nuggets. I can imagine the number of, sort of machines and factories that have gone from turning that thing into that thing and how many more ingredients that has. We have pizzas, uh, which can include a, a number of additives. We have ready meals, we have uh, frozen chips, we have some um, cheese products and we have um, various types of cereal. Uh, a number of these products are heavily focused on the child market. Mm -hmm. Chris, I want to make sure I've got this. So at that end of the table, we've got unprocessed or minimally processed food. That's correct. So if I think of like milk, mm -hmm. it's minimally processed, but it's basically still milk. But then it only becomes ultra processed into the child's yogurt or the cheesy strings. This has additives and lots of ingredients I don't have at home, and it's gone through more layers of mechanical or industrial processing. How can I really be sure if what I'm buying is ultra processed or part of one of the other groups? There's a few things we can uh, use to identify our ultra processed foods. Firstly, the list of ingredients. If those ingredients include things we don't use at home, they're not in our larder, then that's a sign that it may well be uh, ultra processed. <laughs> Not all ready meals or pre-prepared foods like nuggets are ultra-processed, but many are. If they have additives and chemicals that aren't used in home cooking, then they can be classified as an ultra-processed food. Obviously, we all eat foods like this, but Professor Millet is concerned about the high proportion of these foods in children's diets. Today in Britain, two in every three calories consumed amongst children and adolescents is derived from this group. They're everywhere, they're cheap, and they're heavily marketed. So they're very difficult to resist and dif very difficult to avoid. 